Hello everyone. So we want to start chapter 14. <clears throat> In this chapter, we're going to talk about uh, internal flow. The internal flow is a flow for which the fluid is confined by a surface. And the detailed knowledge of behavior of such a flow and the regime of the flow is of importance in engineering because there are so many devices, systems, cycles, were, and processes and mechanical devices where we use internal flow in HVAC system, in heating cooling system, uh, piping, and, uh, and that's why we need to know how the fluid behaves when it's confined in, in all sides. Liquid and gas flow through pipes and ducts, and they are commonly used, as I said, in HVAC systems, in pipings, the fluid in such applications is usually forced to flow by a fan or pump or compressors through flow sections. We can have different forms of cross section for the fluid flow, circular, non-circular, rectangular type from a dog, for example, in here. When we talk about internal flow, most of the equations are valid for uh, circular pipe, but also there are equations and correlations that are developed for non-circular pipe, like rectangular flow. What we're gonna focus in this chapter is the pressure loss as a result of passing the fluid through a pipe, through a duct. So we want to calculate that pressure loss that is called head loss. Then we're gonna add some extra elements like turbines or pump and compressors. So let's look back at the energy equations that we had. You remember that when we have only first three terms on the left-hand side and only the first three terms on the right-hand side, we call that equation Bernoulli, Bernoulli equation. Bernoulli equation was for a simple case where we didn't have head loss, we didn't have any turbine, we didn't have any pump in our equations. So now we're gonna work with this equation that is more comprehensive. Again, this is called energy equations. In these energy equations, the pressure drops equals the pressure loss in the case of having horizontal pipe, but uh, <clears throat> and with the same velocity. This is what we're gonna talk about in the next slide, by the way. So here we're gonna, we're gonna take into consideration the loss of mechanical energy as a result of having turbine, the gain of mechanical energy if you have a pump installed or a compressor, and also loss of mechanical energy as a result of head loss, as a result of friction between the fluid and the pipe and the dock. So this is the equation that we're gonna look at. In this equation, these two, the, the force term in here and the force term in here, H, H of pump and head of the turbine, these are the values that can be, <coughs> that are typically given to us, or they can be given uh, based on the from the uh, from uh, for a certain power plant for a certain mechanical systems and cycles 
But this is what we need to calculate. So H of turbine, H of pump, sometimes they are given, sometimes we can calculate them based on other terms in here. But what we're gonna focus on right now is H sub L, A sub L. So now let's say I, I want to rearrange this equation and write it in this form. The pressure drop between point one and two. P one minus P two instead of writing P2 minus P1. It means the pressure drop is as a result of having velocity decrease, um, the, the change of velocity, the change of elevation, having a turbine, having a pump, and also head loss. Now, this equation means the pressure drop or delta P, P1 minus P2, and the pressure loss as a result of having friction between the fluid and the walls of the pipe and ducts, that is rho GHL, this term rho G H sub L, these two can be equal if this term is zero, Z2 minus Z1 is zero, turbine is zero, and H pump are zero. Or in other words, if the flow section is horizontal, so the elevation at point one and elevation at point two are equal, if the velocity does not change from point one uh, to point two, the average velocity does not change between point one and point two. And also there is no turbine or pump installed between point one and point two. Then the pressure drop between point from point one to two is equal to rho GL or pressure loss as a result of friction between the fluid and the pipe. So first we wanna focus on this case not having any elevation change, Z2 is equal to Z1, not having any velocity change or kinetic energy change or mass, basically mass flow rate change, and no pump or turbine between point one and two, and we want to focus on the head loss first. If you want to calculate this term, first we need, we need to know the regime of the fluid flow. Because depending on the regime of the flow, we can have different form of heat loss or different amount of heat loss for a certain length, for a constant length, length of the pipe or tube. So first we need to define it because for different regime, the form of head loss can be different or intensity basically of the head loss can be different. You need to use different formulas. We have two main form of regime of the fluid flow. We may have laminar flow. Laminar flow is basically a layered flow. It's very organized flow. Or it's called a streamlined flow in pipes or tubes or ducts. It occurs when a fluid flows in parallel layers with no disruption between the layers, so they don't mix. At low velocities, the fluid tends to flow without lateral mixing, and adjacent layers a slide past one another like playing cards. Uh, there are no cross currents perpendicular to the direction of flow, nor eddies or swirls or fluid, uh, swirls of the fluids or uh, any mixing and vortices. In laminar flow, the motion of the particles of the fluid is very orderly with all particles moving in straight lines parallel to the pipe walls or ducts, duct walls. Any lateral mixing, 
mixing at right angles, the flow direction I mean, occurs by the action of diffusion between layers of the liquid. Diffusion mixing can be a slow. However, if the diameter of the pipe of the tube is a small, then this diffusive mixing can be very significant. So we are talking about a situation when we don't have any mixing, any significant amount of mixing, except for diffusion mixing, a small exchange of the molecules and particles between diff different layers of the fluid. So this is laminar flow. The other main form of fluid flow regime is turbulent flow. Turbulent flow is a flow regime characterized by chaotic property changes. This includes rapid variation of pressure and flow velocity in a space and time. So we're going to see temporal and a spatial change of the flow properties, specifically velocity and pressure. In contrast to laminar flow that was organized, the fluid no longer travels in layers. And mixing across the tube is highly efficient. So we have intense mixing between layers. Flows at Reynolds number larger than 4,000 for internal flow are typically considered to be turbulent. While those at low Reynolds number below 2300 usually remain laminar. So what about between 2300 and 4000? What about the regime of the fluid flow with the Reynolds number between these two values? That type of fluid flow is called transition flow. The regime of the fluid flow is, trans, is in transition or transient. Then we have internal flow with the Reynolds number between 2300 and 4000. There is significant difference, so many differences between two types of fluid flow. One of the very significant uh, difference says between these two type of regimes is the velocity profile. Velocity profile is sharper in laminar flow compared to turbulent flow. So in turbulent flow, we have more of a flat profile than the laminar flow profile. This is one of the differences. So I said we need to know the Reynolds number to decide if we are dealing with the laminar flow or turbulent regime. The Reynolds number, the Reynolds number is defined as the ratio between the inertial forces and viscous forces, or in a simple word, is a ratio of how much the fluid tends to, or the fluid or the flow tends to move forward, versus uh, to uh, how much friction or how much forces against the flow is present. So this ratio is Reynolds number. When the fluid has a high momentum, it tends to move forward very fast. And it can dominate the viscous forces or frictions. And it's called high Reynolds number fluid. When the viscous forces or friction basically is dominant, then we have laminar flow. So this is how the Reynolds number is defined in fluid mechanics. <clears throat> the inertial force divided by viscous forces. Also, we have a critical Reynolds number. I said that when we have a large Reynolds number, 
we have turbulent flow, when we have lower Reynolds number is called laminar, the flow is called laminar, we have laminar regime of the fluid flow, and mm, we have organized flow. How do we define the Reynolds number? De define Reynolds number mathematically is equal to density times the velocity of the fluid times the diameter of the cross section of the fluid flow divided by dynamic viscosity or velocity times diameter divided by new or kinematic viscosity. So these are the form, these are these two are the formulas that we use to calculate Reynolds number. Now, as I said, if the fluid flow has a Reynolds number less than 2300, it's laminar internal flow for internal flow larger than 4000 is turbulent flow. So there is a there is a boundary in between the Reynolds number at which the flow becomes turbulent is called critical Reynolds number. For different geometries, for different type of fluid flow, we have different critical Reynolds number. If we are talking about the circular pipes, then the up to 2300, the rain up to 20, 2300, the flow is laminar flow. Larger than four, 400, four, I'm sorry, 23, larger than 4,000 is turbulent flow. What about in between? In between is called transient flow, the transient regime of the fluid flow, the transient regime of the fluid, of the flow. But in this chapter, we just want to focus on these two, these two, laminar flow and turbulent flow on the the transient also, to be honest, is very complicated. There are so many formulas for transient flow, but we don't want to cover it in these course. As I said, for different types of cross-section, we have different, uh, the critical Reynolds number may be different, may be different. For circular point, the Reynolds number itself is calculated using the diameter of the pipe. But what if we don't have a circular pipe? What if we have non-circular pipe? Then we need to use hydraulic diameter. The hydraulic diameter is commonly used term when handling flow in a non-circular tube or channel. What it does is the hydraulic diameter transforms non-circular dots into pipes of equivalent diameter. So if you want to calculate the Reynolds number for non-circular pipe, first you need to calculate the hydraulic diameter that gives you equivalent, the, that gives you the equivalent diameter. Then, you use this equivalent diameter to calculate the Reynolds number according to this equation. So what are these two variables? Four times A sub C is a cross-sectional area of the pipe or the, of the dot or of any non-circular pipe or even circular pipe divided by perimeter of that flow cross-section. The perimeter. For example, for a square dog, the perimeter is four times A, the length of each side of the pipe of the dog, and the cross-sectional area is A squared. So hydraulic diameter for a square dog is equal to A, the length of each side. For a rectangular dog, it decides equal to A and B. The perimeter is two times A plus E. The area is obviously AB. So hydraulic diameter is 4A over P that is 4A sub C over P that is equal to 2AB over A plus B. For channel flow, you see for channel flow, 
when you want to calculate the hydraulic diameter, when you put the perimeter, you need to put the wet, to put the wet diameter. So here your wet diameter is A, B, and other A. Because these lengths, at this part, you don't have any wall. So you don't have any wet side or wall. So your perimeter is two times A plus B. So it's not two times A plus B. It's two A plus B. And cross-section area, cross-sectional area is the same, four times A. Interestingly, if you use this, if the hydraulic diameter formula for circular pipe, we get exactly the diameter of the pipe, four times cross-sectional area of the pipe, pi d squared over four divided by perimeter that is pi d, the result is equal to d. Now, now that we know how to define the regime of the fluid flow, how do we calculate the pressure loss as a result of head loss? If you want to calculate this, we need to use this equation. The equation, this equation here, is very general equation. Here we have F, we have length, we want to calculate F factor in here, divided by diameter times the density times velocity squared divided by two. Why do we put average velocity here? Because typically, as you can see here, we have a velocity profile. So velocity changes from the wall to the center of the cross section. That's why we, we look at average value instead of the actual velocity at each location. So F L times the FL times density times D squared over two. F is Darcy friction factor. Darcy friction factor. And in this formula also, I just put a note in here. The, this term rho V squared over two is called dynamic pressure, dynamic pressure. So, I just want to mention one thing in here. About Reynolds number. As you can see, the dimension of Reynolds number is one. It, it's dimensionless, it's one, it's dimensionless. It doesn't have any dimension. Okay, so Reynolds number is a dimension because it's a ratio between two forces. So they have the same unit, the numerator and denominator. So this is the equation that we use to calculate the head loss, or basically this term in our equation, A sub L. But in this equation, everything is in length scale. Here, this formula gives me pressure scale. So the unit of this is pressure the pressure loss for all types of fully developed internal flows. Okay, now how do we calculate F? The F is called Darcy factor. If we have laminar flow, the F can be calculated by using this equation if you have circular pipe. So the friction factor F for a laminar flow in a circular pipe, only circular pipe, can be calculated using this equation. 64 divided by Reynolds number. It means the friction factor is only a function of Reynolds number in laminar flow. So the roughness of the pipe surface is not 
considered and does not have to be considered in our correlations. Now, if I want to, by the way, write that equation, this equation in, this, in terms of in pressure unit in head loss form, I need to divide, divide that equation by rho g, density times gravitational acceleration. Then it's called head loss. So here is called pressure loss. Other form of that is called loss. This one has a length unit for laminar flow can be calculated. The F can be calculated using these equations. Those correlations are of the most general relations, as I mentioned in here, in fluid mechanics and are valid for both types of fluid flow, laminar or turbulent flow. Even for circular or non-circular pipes, we can use these equations and pipes with a smooth or rough surfaces. When we go to the turbulent flow, you see that when we want to calculate the Darcy friction factor, we need to take into consideration the roughness of this uh, of the pipe surface as well. So we might have it in pressure form or hip form, pressure scale, length scale. The first practice that I want you guys to do is to show that, demonstrate that the Reynolds number for flow in a circular pipe of diameter D, circular pipe, can be expressed in this form, four times mass flow rate divided by pi diameter times mu. So you need to start from this equation, rho VD over mu, and come up with this result. So you need to show that only for a circular pipe, you can write your Reynolds number in this form. And we're gonna use this result in the next example. So let's say, so here in this example, we want to see changing the diameter of the cross section of the fluid flow affects the pressure loss and how much is affects the pressure loss. So let's say for this point with diameter D, we need to provide 16 horsepower to, so we need to provide this power to make up for the loss of the fluid flow pressure. What if I pass the, the flow, the same mass flow rate, the same mass flow rate through a different pipe with the diameter that is equal to double the initial diameter? So the pumping power requirement for a laminar flow piping system, I want to answer this, can be reduced by a factor of what? By doubling the pipe diameter. So this is the problem statement. The mass flow rate in these two pipes are the same. The diameter here is D, here is 2D. Here, the pumping power requirement is 16 horsepower. What is the pumping power requirement for this pipe to provide the same, to provide the same mass flow rate? I need to use this equation. I need to use the pressure loss. So if we don't have during over these lengths, so pump is installed somewhere in here, somewhere upstream distance, like here. So it's not between, so it's not installed in here. Installed somewhere upstream distance at the beginning of the pipe and the flow. So I need to calculate, this is what I need to do. I need to calculate the pressure loss in the second case and compare it to the first case. And uh, according to this power, I need to see how much would be requirement for 
this flow. Mass flow rate is the same, only diameter changes from D1 to 2D1. So what I need to do is just calculating the pressure loss of this and compare it with the pressure loss of the first case. Okay, mass flow rate is the same. Diameter is double the initial diameter. If mass flow rate is the same, then rho V A E1 is equal to rho V A2. The density, we assume that doesn't change between case one and case two. So V A1 is equal to V A2 or V sub two over V sub A, V sub one is equal to A1 over A2. Since we have circular pipe, the ratio of the ratio between the areas are equal to d1 over d2 squared this area is pi d squared so pi d squared over four so that means the v sub 2 over v1 is equal to because d2 is equal to d1 is equal to 2d1 D2 over V1 is equal to 1 over 2 squared, or is equal to 1 over 4. So V in case 2 for the same for the same mass load as the one in case 1 is equal to a, a force of the initial velocity. So this is what we have in terms of velocity. Where do I need it? I need it when I want to compare the delta P between case one and case two. So I want to calculate this. Delta P for case two divided by delta P as a result of head loss for case one. I use this equation, f of d rho v squared over 2 for case 2 and case 1. The lengths are the same. We are talking about the same lengths of the fluid, same lengths of the pipe. So L2 and L1 cancel out. The density are the same. 2, 2 cancel out. So this is the equation that I have. So the pressure loss difference depends on the Darcy friction factor and there is no density by the way in here. Darcy friction factor, velocity, and that's it. Because I already know that D2 is equal to, D2 is equal to 2 D1. There's going to be 2, and here is going to be 1. So this is what we have. The pressure loss for this case depends on the ratio of the velocity squared and ratio of the Darcy friction factor. Now, for this is equal to F2 over F1, V2 squared over V1 squared. Now, V2, I know from here, that is equal to one force of V1. So V2 over V1 squared is actually one over 16, is one over 16. Or my or my pressure loss is actually equal to, the ratio is equal to one over 32 times F2 over F1. So the ratio between pressure loss is one over 32 times F2 divided F1. So at this point, what I need to do is to see what's this ratio, F2 to F1. If it's laminar flow in both cases, if it's so, this is the assumption that I make. I assume that in both cases we have laminar flow, then 
The Darcy friction factor is calculated using this equation, 64 over Reynolds number. The ratio between these two cases, for case one and case two, so F2 over F1 is equal to 64, 64 cancel out, is equal to Reynolds one divided by Reynolds two. And from this equation, from this practice that you guys want to solve for, the Reynolds is equal to 4m dot over pi dm. So Reynolds 1 to Reynolds 2 is equal to 4m dot over pi d1 mu over 4m dot over pi d2 mu. The m's are the same, the m dot, the mass flow rate, pi cancel out, mu cancel out. So f2 over f1 is equal to d2 over d1, that is 2. That means the pressure loss in case two divided by pressure loss in case one is equal to two over 32 or one over 16. This is very interesting result. It means for the same mass flow rate and for the same regime of the fluid flow, the pumping power requirement for a laminar flow piping system can be reduced by a factor of 16 by doubling the pi diameter. So if you have the same mass flow rate, the same regime of the fluid, by increasing the diameter, your pressure loss decreases and you need less pumping power to make up for this pressure loss. So pressure loss in case two is much smaller than pressure loss in case one. That was for circular case. For non-circular case, the friction factor can be read, friction factor equation for laminar flow can be read from this table. This table that you guys also have it in your book. So we solve for that example for a circular pipe. So if you have non-circular pipe, let's say you have rectangular pipe, then you, your friction factor is calculated using this equation if, you're, if the aspect ratio is one. So if the aspect ratio A over B is one, basically if you have a square, if you have a square duct, then your F is calculated using this equation, 56.92 or Reynolds number. If the aspect ratio is two, then you need to use this equation and so on. And also for triangular shape and other forms. So for circular pipe, we use this equation. In the second practice, this is what I'm asking you guys to do. Consider the laminar flow of a fluid through a square channel with the smooth surfaces. The average velocity of the fluid is doubled. So this is what I did. I didn't change the diameter. I mean, here we don't have actually diameter, regular diameter, we have hydro hydraulic diameter. So what I did is double the velocity so case one is V and case two is two V. What is the change in the head loss of the fluid? Assume that the flow regime remains unchanged. So for case one and case two, you have laminar flow. So you have laminar flow, that means you can use this equation and more specifically this part of this table, the velocity increases in case two to two V, what is this ratio? I want you guys to calculate this ratio. Example, water at, at, four, at 10 degree, water at 10 degrees Celsius with these thermophysical property, density, and dynamic viscosity is flowing steadily in a 0.12 centimeter diameter 
and 50 meter long pipe at an average velocity of 0.9 meter per second. What is the pressure drop? What is the head loss? So here you see these are basically the same A and B, but they are in different units. Here is in pressure unit. Here we need to convert it to length unit. The pumping power requirement to overcome this pressure drop. The density and the viscosity of the water are already given. The first, so first we need to determine the flow regime. We need to know the flow regime to decide if it's laminar or turbulent or if, 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 whether we can use the laminar flow equations or not. To calculate Reynolds number, we use the regular, the typical equation, density times velocity times diameter, then divided by dynamic viscosity, and the result is 82.6.1. And as you know, and you can see it here, that all the units cancel out with each other, and this result is dimensional. So Reynolds number is a dimensionless number. The Reynolds number is a small, basically it's a smaller than 2300. So it means the flow is laminar. The regime of the fluid is laminar. The, flu the flow of the fluid is in laminar regime. So we can use this equation for a circular pipe, 64 of our Reynolds number. This is the Darcy friction factor. We plug that in into the, the pressure loss, the, head, the pressure loss equations for length of L. We have the F, we have the length, diameter, density, velocity, squared divided by two. If you plug it in, in, in here, plug it in, uh, in here, this is what we get. Here you see that I divided by 1,000 value in here. Why? Because the result of this part, if we plug the F in here, also F, by the way, you guys notice that, F is also dimensionless because it's 64 scalar divided by a constant value divided by dimensionless number. So F is also, or the Darcy friction factor is also dimensionless. So here, what it gives you guys is Pascal. If you use the length in meter, D in meter, rho in kilogram per meter cube and velocity in meter per second, what this equation can give you is Pascal or Newton per meter square. I divided these by 1000 to get the result in kilopascal. So the reason that I divided by 1000 is just converted to kilopascal. Now that I have the pressure loss, the head loss, can be calculated easily. All I need to do is just dividing what I get from here and divide it by, now divide what I get from here by rho g. So delta p, the pressure loss, divided by rho g gives you the result in meter, in meter. And by the way, here, when I want to get meter, keep in mind that I don't use this divide by 1000. So I divide this part on the, this part that gives you Pascal by rho g, by rho g. So F L V squared over 2g divided by diameter gives you head loss. And the last part, the, I need to calculate the pumping power. To calculate the pumping power requirement, this is what I do. I calculate the volumetric flow rate that is equal to velocity times the cross-sectional area. 
that has a unit of meter cube per second, if you multiply your volumetric flow rate by the pressure loss, you get power unit. So whatever that you get in here, here, pressure loss, if you multiply it by the volumetric flow rate, it gives you power, power unit. The power that you basically lose during this flow can be calculated using this and multiplied by the volumetric flow rate. So volumetric flow rate times the pressure loss, pressure loss, not the head loss, gives you the required pumping power to overcome that pressure loss. So what if we have turbulent flow? As I said, if the Reynolds number is less than 2300, you have, well, for internal flow, you have laminar flow. And if you have, and if you have the Reynolds number larger than 4000, you have turbulent flow. The, so this is the section, this is the part that I want, this is where I want to uh, stop actually, uh, do the remaining part uh, in your Thursday section. Thank you guys.